Let's take the theory we developed in the last lecture and apply it to specifically uh, two-dimensional uh, airfoil. Uh, so just as a summary, this is, these are the equations we developed last time, right? And for thin airfoil, we show that this is basically equal to zero. Uh, there's no thickness involved with it. However, we do say there is such a thing like plus, such a thing like minus. So we are working around a zero thickness, right? Thickness is equal to zero, but when we say zero plus, we mean at the top. When we say zero minus, we mean at the bottom. And then this basically becomes N. Uh, because we are working at the chord line. This is a uh, chord. Okay, this is for a uh, two-dimensional thin wall for. Okay, so as a summary of what we uh, learned in the previous lecture, uh, we need this quantity here. So if I subtract this minus this, okay, and when I do that subtraction, uh, you will see that we find this quantity and this is going to be very important to replace into the equations that we already derived. Um, so uh, the first thing that we use to derive for uh, the, the Kara-Jogowski theorem to two dimensions uh, for the vor vortex strength, we got this expression right here. Uh, know that for 2D we don't use your span B so for the 2D analysis, what we have is L divided by one half rho V squared times C. And there's no B, again, this is small L. If you remember, we are working in a, um, this is uh, for two dimensional case, DL. So if I replace uh, x and if I replace this term right here into here uh, you can further show this gives you minus 2 V infinite C 0 to L gamma uh, x dx uh, do the replacement as we did before uh, 1 half C times 1 minus cosine of theta and then d of x is equal to c over 2 uh, sine theta d theta. Uh, d theta. Doing that replacement uh, leaves to the following expression. Uh, uh, gives you cl is equal to minus 2 v infinite c. 0 to pi gamma theta c2 sine of theta d theta and this expression we can further simplify it as follows uh, not expecting you to know the whole derivation but this gives you the following expression a sub zero one plus cosine of theta d theta plus two times summation of n equal to 1 to a a n um, 0 to pi sine of n theta sine of theta d theta and this whole expression you can show that is equal to minus 2 times a sub 0 pi again this is value for thin wall uh, thin airfoils only and this whole thing is basically equal to pi over 2 when n is equal to 1 and is equal to 0 otherwise. Okay, so in a short sense, this whole thing is given by this expression a1 minus 2a sub 0. And that's the expression that we will be using for to the two-dimensional airfoils. Um, so now the moment, uh, the moment equation, uh, again, know that there's no more B applied here. We did this last time. Again, we can do the same or similar substitution. Uh, and what you can show that at the end of the day, you find for 
two again two dimensional thin wall airfoils give you the following expression a1 pi x over c minus one half plus a2 pi over four uh, you have that expression so this is the fraction expression for the moment uh, in two dimensions uh, 2d uh, again this is 2d uh, we'll get to that in a minute and then the aerodynamic center again when this is zero we did this last time so if i replace all the quantities here you can uh, so we can start working with all the derivation so your cl is equal to pi this is your lift minus 2a sub 0 uh, note that a sub 0 is equal to y something y minus alpha okay so there's alpha involved here um, and then partial of cl respect to alpha will give you minus 2 pi partial a sub 0 times alpha that this is equal to minus 1 from here is equal to minus 1 the whole thing is equal to pi over 2 okay and that's the reason sometimes uh, your your lift coefficient in terms of alpha is equal to what we call a sub 0 is equal to this do not confuse confuse that a sub 0 with the capital a sub 0 small case is uh, is the uh, lift coefficient uh, this coefficient the slope here alpha CL this is a sub zero I'm talking about so now given that equation we can calculate m of x uh, a sub zero uh, pi one half minus two x over c plus a one pi x c minus one half plus a two uh, pi over two take the derivative of this respect to alpha remember we want to find this aerodynamic center and so i need to set that to zero uh, respect to alpha would be partial uh, the derivative of a sub zero respect to alpha know that this is function of alpha times the whole thing one half minus two xc plus uh, partial of this respect to alpha this is not so it will be zero um, this is xc minus one half plus partial of a2 respect to alpha pi over two doing all the uh, replacing all those values in there uh, you can show that your final answer will be um, your your derivative of cm uh, would be alpha is equal to zero that gives you uh, 2 AC minus this pi is equal to zero uh, and working out the math here at the end of the day you find 2 pi XC minus 1 over 4 is equal to zero so X is equal to C over 4 and this is the aerodynamic center this is for only thin airfoils okay uh, we also calculated the center of pressure uh, center of pressure we gave we, we I told you last time is given by this expression here uh, so we replace this expression the uh, one the uh, we know that this is equal to one a quarter chord uh, so we place that in here that gives you a sub zero pi uh, one half minus two ac divided by c plus a one pi x ac divided by c minus one half plus a two pi over four this whole thing is uh, you replace this in here and you find the final expression for this as minus 4 
a1 plus pi over 4 a2. Okay? This is for, again, to the thin airfoil. Okay? Uh, and then your center pressure, so we found this value. Take this value, plug it inside there, and your final expression gives you something like this. So we can work the math here. So you find CP is equal to AC minus CMC CL, same thing CL minus MAC divided by CL. So replacing the whole thing uh, for pi A1 minus 2A sub 0 minus A2 pi over 2 minus A1 pi over 4 divided by CL uh, and then just do a little bit of algebra and you can show that this is going to equal to 2 times CL minus A sub 0 plus A1 uh, minus A2 divided by 2 and this is true for thin airfoils only. Okay, so uh, the next item uh, we want to calculate, the last thing we want to calculate is uh, the coefficient of lift. Uh, we can go back to the equation I derived for you last time. Uh, just note and be uh, careful, there's no B here because we're working in two, in two dimensions. So your final expression was given by one half rho v squared, uh, gamma over v, uh, one half rho v infinite squared, c, c, l, uh, and specifically for two, uh, for two the, uh, uh, for two the airfoil, you can further simplify this to c, e is equal to two gamma c times v infinite, Note that there are no units here. And then gamma is equal to C V infinite CL divided by two. And the units are consistent. This is L squared over time. Those are the units. Um, so this basically drives, gives you all the derivations that we are really looking for couple of things that is worth to summarize for uh, general results for thin uh, airfoil theory. First of all, the pressure across an airfoil, uh, in other words, this is what produced, produces the lift and the moment, independent of the contribution of the thickness. The aerodynamic center is quarter cord. Uh, for thin wall, again, remember thin airfoil, that's what we are working for. So the aerodynamic center for uh, this case will be uh, C. So what we are saying is if I have this, so the distance from here to here from the trailing edge, that's the location where your aerodynamic center is located at. The center pressure for any symmetric thin wall airfoil is also at a quarter cord. Uh, it's a coincidence, doesn't always have to be like that. Um, and then the slope for any airfoil, and we showed this, that is equal to uh, 2 pi, uh, is equal to partial of CL respect to the alpha, this is equal to 2 pi, and CL is equal to pi L delta alpha, or A sub zero delta alpha. Okay, these are all the consequences of the results for thin airfoil, uh, thin airfoils. This concludes this discussion.